Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Spitball Media Podcast. We're going to be spitting out a shit ton of big, big entertainment stories, the top entertainment stories of the week, which we do each and every week here at the Spitball Media Podcast. That's it. My name is John Draper. Shaheen, how are you? I'm good, man. There's been a lot of shootings here, so uh, I'm still alive. No big straight book got me. Big you uptick know? in the shootings there in Philly. So, you know. Yeah, I think like fucking, I don't know, like 10 people got shot yesterday at, during the aid. It's, it's fucking crazy because it's like a religious ceremony where they were giving away free food to the Muslims that were fasting and then everybody got shot. So it's Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, well, that means less people getting the food if you shoot a bunch of people. And yeah. More food yeah. For, the, for the people with the guns. Makes sense. And, of course, Bisho Brian, I was wearing almost that exact same shirt today. I'm not even joking with you. I'll take a picture of it and send it to you later. The flannel one? Yeah, well, I thought I had an 11 o'clock on camera meeting. And normally, I don't even, I don't even, I just brushed my teeth at that point. Like, I, I take a midday uh, shower. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got a meeting. I got to put a shirt on. And then uh, I, it wasn't until 2 o'clock. So I was like, oh, fuck. I didn't need to get... <laughs> Back to the pajamas. <laughs> I did That's it the other day too. Um, they were watching the clips outside, and I had a meeting virtually. And I walked out because someone was clanging in vodka bottles, trying to pour a drink. I'm like, I got a client on the line, and I'm standing in a white Jesus. button down with gym shorts on, and like, oh yeah, not like high socks and no shoes. It was ridiculous. Yeah, summer's coming, so you got to get ready, B Show. That sounds like a good summer outfit for you. Yeah, just walk around in a button down with gym shorts, flip flops, yeah, like and... a, a summer mankind outfit, like mankind. Oh, yeah. In the summertime. But, uh, hey, if you people join us for the first time, thanks for checking us out. We really appreciate it. But uh, you'd be doing us a big favor if you went on over to patreon.com backslash spitball media. Uh, for five bucks a month, we're talking, I think, 1,300 hours of exclusive content going back to the break the apocalypse days, height of COVID, like, like the world falling apart, all the bonus shows, all the, the solo shows. Shot, they get it all for a low, low price. Yeah, man, five bucks. We got a couple of uh, new Patreons that saw signed up, I think like three in the last week. So shout out to them. Thank you very much. Oh, that's very cool. Very, very yeah. cool. Cleric of the Chaos, I think, signed up today. So, oh, mm -hmm. well, we're, we're big fans of the Cleric of Chaos. Yeah. We've known him for quite some time. B Show Brian, uh, you love the Patreon. I love the Patreon because, like, we talk about topical stuff here, but then the Patreon lets us dive into other things. So, like, if we want to talk about something that we don't have time for on the show that's really cool, we can get into it. Or one thing I might do is, Sometimes the Q&A, because we have three people answer, answering a bunch of questions. Right. Sometimes there's a question that comes in that might maybe merit a, a longer show or a longer answer. And I might start doing that with the Q&A shows is breaking one out and, and going forward with that. So lots of cool shit we can do with Patreon. And it's all because you guys support us. So thank you very yes. much for that. And, and a lot of people in the Patreon shot, as you and I know and B-Show know, have been here since day zero. Uh, like we have a lovely retention record with quite a few people going back to almost three and a half years ago yeah we have a smaller uh community compared to a lot of podcasts but they're very oh, dedicated yeah. so shout out to all of you we appreciate it if it wasn't yeah. for you guys we probably wouldn't be doing this <laughs> oh yeah for sure yeah. you know i forget who's it uh joey diaz who said i i'd rather have i just need three you just need three fucking friends you just need three guys that's it three four guys that's it that's all you need i'll take three or four guys be show like that will do that will take my back like, like, like our kind of community over like a hundred guys that just say they would, but would never show up. Yeah. I've always been surrounded by people who are fake. Like, Oh, Hey buddy, buddy. Hey buddy. Are you, you know, to random ass people and people they meet two or three times. It's like, ah, I'm not, I'm not for that. Like yeah. my daughter the other day said something about like, dad, why don't you have friends? <laughs> I'm like, I do have Your friends. daughter said, I'm sorry. What was that? You said that very quick. And my daughter said, why don't you have friends? I'm like, I do. I have Justin next door. I've got West <sighs> across the street. I've got this person here, this person there. And she's like, oh, but you guys don't text a lot. I'm like, that's because that guys don't text all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I get that too. You know, like I, I got a good friend right now. We got like <clears throat> this good, good couple of uh, friend of ours who are getting divorced and like, it's really ugly. And I'm trying to stay away from it because I get married the way people blow their nose. Like, you know, I don't need, I don't need another fucking I, I had too old for another ex-wife. This is not ex-wife material like this. You know what I'm saying? Shot like this is not dating scene. Look, you know, Yeah, I feel like I've dodged three divorces so far. So I'm kind of, you, pro you probably you know, have. I have no hundred percent. I have. You definitely have. Cause I've been in a three back to back long-term relationships. And then, uh, 
So yeah, I've dodged those and uh, no kids. So I think I've dodged a lot of bullets so far, you know. Because yeah, honestly, dude, I, like all my friends, they're they're either like miserably married and just fucking or going through divorces. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's rough. You're yeah. lonely at times, but fuck, man. At least I don't have to fucking pay alimony and child. Oh support. no, child support. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, but your breakups are like divorces, right? When you sit at B show, like yeah, Scott, well, yeah. Scott's breakups, <laughs> he, like his breakups are not like normal. Like we dated for a while, we broke up, we don't talk anymore. These are like, I'm going to court to kill you, motherfucker. I'm going to hit you with yeah. my car. I'm going to poison you. I put glass in your food. I was going to say. I mean, the last, the last two, I think, were the worst ones. Um, the one previous to that was was five years. Then I had the seven year. And then right. I, I, I know, had the I two know about years, all these. So. I know about bunch of I'm back to years. back to back to back, you know. You've been yeah, married you, just without the ring. Right, yeah, you've exactly. been married more than me. Yep. Be so I got a ring once. I got a ring once. Uh, the seven year too. one actually gave me a ring too. during uh, Christmas. And I didn't know how to react to that because I was like, I was just caught off guard. I was like, oh, sh 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 fuck. Like, I was like, I you want to order some food? Yeah, I was like, shit, man. I got, I got you some fucking clothes and shit. You got me a goddamn ring. Like, how do I react to this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's know. rough, dude. It's rough and tumble. Speaking of rough, let's talk about the rough and tumble crew we got chilling with us tonight. I'm going to say shout out to Mr. Punches, Joe Punches, that is. Of course, my buddy Rich Dow, uh, Kevco TV. We got Chris Matthews. We got Eric Turner. We got uh, Steve Colantuno. Uh, what else do we got? I think I skipped some people. Sorry about that, guys. Clerk of Chaos. Uh, Clerk of Chaos, of course, Mr. Isaacs. Uh, Slave Cheeks is chilling. The Dirkster, Dirk One, Dirk One. I'm going to start calling him Dirk One because he's constantly changing his name and then get mad at me for not remembering it. But yeah, great crew. Thank you guys for chilling. And uh, of course, our pal Chris Matthews is in there. My God. Listen, it's been a crazy week. And for those of you that have been following the show for a little bit or have been with the show even for a little while or longer or whatever, uh, you know, we kind of have a thing here where the three of us, for very specific reasons, do not talk a lot of wrestling. We never have. It was never a point of the show. It's kind of the point of the show was to not talk about wrestling. Uh, the Drew Yarsifer is there. Marquise is there. My buddy Marquise Johns. Anyway, there have been occasions, though, where we've broke with this. And uh, tonight's going to be one of them. Uh, we have a bunch of significant movies to talk about in the free tonight, and we're going to get to three incredible trailers, very different films that we're all excited about. But uh, again, consider going to patreon.com backslash spitball media, five bucks. You can even get it on in this upcoming Q&A we got at the end of the month. But uh, here's the deal. Uh, we decided offline <laughs> that we were going to talk about the CM Punk video because this whole circumstance is so batshit crazy. And it's just gotten so significantly worse um, that it bears talking about, quite frankly. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but we are going to talk about it. And then we're going to get to our movie stuff. First and foremost, I want to go to Shah because Shah's the least connected to wrestling. As, as Whereas we go back years ago, he was the most connected to wrestling and worked in the industry, worked with performers, worked with fucking, uh, you know, worked with a company uh, that was, you know, getting off the ground. So, you know, he's he's done a lot of stuff in the industry that B Show and I have never done. Okay. So Shy, I just want to back this up a little bit. No CM Punk interaction ever in your life, correct? I just want to make sure for the for the No. I mean, I was in the same building as him once, but I mean <laughs> that's I've never talked to the guy. I don't know anything about CM Punk now. Okay, what about people you've worked with? And your sort of before we get into this, any did you like what was your opinion of punk generally before the controversies in the last 18 months? Um, I've always been a fan of punk. Um, I've always liked him. I, I felt like, you know, if I hung out with him, I'd probably get along with him because I'm pretty grumpy myself. Like I, if I was a wrestler, I'd probably very much be like him. Like I wouldn't like to be around people and I just wouldn't like the fans. <laughs> like I can understand yeah. where he's coming from with that. Yeah. Um, however, I, I do think that he's gotten an ego, but I mean, at the same time, I can't really blame the guy. Cause I mean, if you were in his position, how do you not have an ego? You have to have an ego to get to that position. So I don't know. A lot of stuff that he he does, um, I don't want to say makes sense to me, but I can forgive it because I can put myself in his position. I'd be like, yeah, I'd probably be a piece of shit too. I mean, I can't lie. Like, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Imagine if you had millions of dollars and you were fucking wrestling for Ian Rotten and you made it to the WWE and became the biggest star and like, I mean, come on, man, your ego has to go through a fucking roof. It's natural, oh, like yeah. humans, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. B Show Brian, prior to eighteen months ago, I don't recall you and I ever really talking about punk that much. What was your opinion of Punk prior to AEW? Prior to AEW, I was a fan of his from WWE. Um, I think 
I'm a huge fan of his, but I also understand that he does come off as like a pretentious, very showy, very everyone look at me, huddle around me. I need to be the guy kind of person. That said, I'm a huge fan of his work. I never thought he was, you know, Ric Flair in the ring, but he didn't need to be because he could talk people into the building. And that was what I liked about him at a time when you had Seth Rollins doing the, you know, uh, two step around the ring, you know, with their mm. corny, you know, pre arranged matches and stuff like that. He was right. a guy who was just talking and he was a throwback to the old days stuff that I liked. Mm. So I was a big fan of his when he left. I was a huge fan of what he said about WWE because I think all of us thought those things as fans that this is a shit that happens. They're petty. They're spiteful. Um, I do recognize that he has a tendency to, to diminish his role in anything. Like even with the Errol Hawani interview he did, he's talking about all the shit that happened in AEW. And every time it comes to him, he's like, I was, you know, I was just, it's like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. So that's not lost to me. So anyone who wants to say that we're punk fans and we're going to defend him, whatever, um, I will admit 1000% that he seems like he can be a dick and uh, has to have attention, mm. a little bit of a, a drama queen. And probably diminishes yeah. his role in things, but it, it doesn't mean he's not good. It doesn't mean he wasn't right in this situation. And I'm sure we'll right. get to that. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's very different. I've, I've never been able to kind of be objective because he's literally from my scene. Like he is a person from my scene. He is a fan of not only hardcore music, but New York hardcore music. He's a Chicago guy. Uh, you know, he, I've been on a stage with him when he was the WWE champ, when I was not watching wrestling and I was extremely drunk and my youngest brother, Mark, who you guys probably the only one you guys don't know, um, said, wow, I just met WWE champ. And we were on stage at a big festival, hardcore festival in New York. And he goes, hey, he's right there. And he just looked like everybody else. And I, I've said this before. So it's difficult for me. He likes, he's a hardcore guy. He likes comic books. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, and he likes wrestling and horror movies. Okay, and he's a dick. I mean, he's not a cool guy. He's a very jaded, middle-aged, straight-edge guy. So I, I get it. But, yeah, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan, but I respected that he's probably, in my world, the most famous person ever. Like, he's the most famous hardcore guy in the world, in, in my very small universe. So that's how I perceive him. He's wearing my friend's shirts. It's clobbering time as a derivative of one of my closest friend's bands, you know, from Sick of It All. Like, you know, it's just that's his derivative. And he's wearing Chromag shirts. And, you know, he's friends with a lot of people that are friends with my brother. So it's different. My brother Mark. So it's difficult for me. That being said, I know I was always very objective about him being a dick because I know a lot of straight edge guys in their 40s. They're very, they're very much like punk. And I've said this before. This uh, upsets people. But I've been around straight edge since 1988. I, I this is just a, something I've checked, you know, I, I, something I've noticed, right? So we heard about this video. Long story short, unless you've been living under a rock, Punk got into a physical altercation uh, a couple of years ago uh, at a pay per view with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega that led to his banning. Uh, and then they gave him his own show. And then all of this coalesced around uh, Jack Perry, Jungle Boy, uh, Luke Perry's son. Um, uh, an incident that they had that we had heard about that no one had ever seen. And then uh, Punk does an Ariel Holani video the weekend of WrestleMania talking about the event line for line. And people get very upset, Shah. And the reaction from Tony Khan, the owner of AEW who had footage of this, they decided to make it an angle. Now, before we talk about the fucking angle, Shah, when you heard they were showing this footage, what was your expectations? Shit, man, I thought I thought it was going to be a lot more brutal than this. I mean, this was the most underwhelming fight I've ever seen in my fucking life. This was like it's like a cat fight. Like, it's like I don't even know what they were going for. This is like embarrassing to even put this up, you know. Slap, slap, slap. And before before we get into that, um, you know, I, I didn't rub shoulders with Punk at all, but I did know Jungle Boy because he came through GCW. Oh, I didn't know that. I probably should have asked. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he got hired by GCW. That's he, that was the first company that he worked for was GCW. Interactions with him? Lot. Did you have yeah, interactions? Yeah, with him? yeah, definitely. What was your what was your um, opinion on him? He's kind of a dickhead, I thought. Okay. <laughs> To be honest with you. Okay, we've never talked. About he, was, he was one of those guys that was like very full of him. So he was very cocky early on. So like I, I kind of see why they say he's kind of full of himself because yeah, I experienced that vibe. He didn't do anything to me or, or anything, but you know, in the GCW locker room, like it was very. Most people were humble. It's a, it's a very small niche. Like that crowd. doesn't seem like a place, shower where you could be have an ego and get away with it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. 
I don't associate that with anybody really up there. Um, okay. He was one of the main ones that I thought was immediately off the bat thinking he's above indie wow. wrestling and just like, you know, I, I, I don't know. So, I mean, maybe it's because, you know, he's he's a son of a star. Was his you know, dad where, around? Did his dad come to the East Coast for his shows? Because he's following no. him around a lot. Okay. Yeah, I think he did to one of the L.A. shows, but I never saw Yeah, he was at some shows. B-Show, Brian, yeah. what was your Jungle Boy opinion there? Probably. Um. When he first came in, I thought he was like, okay, plucky baby face. They gave him the uh, the the song. I can't remember the name of the, the artist. Uh, but, the uh, Jungle Boy song by Jungle Boy. Who died Tarzan of AIDS. Boy. Yeah, Tarzan Boy. Yeah, Tarzan Boy by died. Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, Baltimore. Died of AIDS. The, the actual somebody, like one of the singers in that, died of AIDS a long time ago. He's been dead forever. But Still I thought dead. That, you know, I thought he was okay for what he was. First coming out, green, baby face, just kind of learning the ropes. Uh, seemed like he had some promise, although he was kind of small. And with the Tarzan boy thing, people kind of gravitated toward that. And I thought, okay, for AEW, for what it is, for being new, fine. Let's see what happens. And then he just never really progressed. And that yeah. was it. So yeah. I didn't know for, in a, anything personally about him other than stories I'd heard online about him kind of being standoffish and a dick. Yeah. But as a performer, I thought when he first started out, I thought maybe he has some promise. But it's yeah, been... Me too. Me too. I mean, ever since. I always thought the gimmick, I may have said this on soup back in the day, but when they did the thing with the Jurassic Express, I always thought loosely that the idea was that the dinosaur fucks Jungle Boy and Jungle Boy fucks Marco Stunt. I always thought it was almost like, <laughs> like one of those nesting human dolls. Centipede. Yeah, yeah, like a human, human centipede. centipede. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I always thought, and I think I said that on soup once. I was like, am I, am I, does, does, does the dinosaur fuck Jungle Boy? Is that what this is? Is this like, and then he gets to fuck the little little guy. Like, I was just wondering if they were going to have, like, little versions of each one, like, human centipede in each like other. Like a fucking mouth. pecking order. Yeah, like, right in the mouth. Like, in the, like, right in the mouth. Just right in the mouth. Yeah. So, anyway, um, so we got to see, they built up this footage. Many people immediately said this was a bad idea. Smart people were like, this is not going to help the company. It's not really going to make a, a, a difference there. And, boy, were they right, B-Show. Now, we don't want to show the video because of copyright strikes. Uh, shout out to Will T. Uh, Aaron Eccles is in there. I think David Byrne, uh, whoever else joined in there. Uh, thank you guys. So they made an angle out of it with the with the young bucks, who are you know really sort of going over a cliff here with a lot of people since this whole incident. They made it a gimmick that the EVPs are evil, um, but it's real. You know they are. You know because the company sided, I guess with with uh with them and and jungle boy and and whoever else over punk but this is a very underwhelming like almost like like statistically speaking this is something that could happen shot in any job in any environment or even amongst friends and it would not be considered a big deal would you agree well especially in the wrestling setting um i mean how many backstage fights have you heard of oh my god wrestling? how many backstage fights have you heard of yeah i mean that's like regular shit, right so for them to make it look like punk is like the most unprofessional and this has never been done before. It's like, dude, this is fucking wrestling. Like this. Yeah. Remember Tony Khan like, said he feared for his life on national television. He went out yeah, on live TV and said he feared for his life. It's a bunch of roided up dudes with a lot of testosterone stuck in the same room. Yeah. Eh, it's It's bound to happen, man. I mean, I don't, again, I haven't watched AEW really ever. I think I caught our first episode. So I don't really know like what happened, what caused this. So I don't know if you guys can fill me in on the background. I don't know what caused this, but. Yeah. So B, B show, you want to fill him in on this is briefly. Yeah. So Punk was Punk, by the way, this is according to Punk shot. So yes. This. So Punk was having issues with, well, everything he said so far, as far as we've seen corroborated by video evidence has been accurate. So I'm going to assume it is. Um, Punk was having issues with the young bucks. They were be uh, allegedly being kind of shitty and catty with him, not doing business, things like that. Okay. They tried to burst into his locker room. We I think we talked about that one. Dog got kicked. They got knocked out <laughs> by him and Ace Steel. And Punk got sent away. As John said, banned from uh, Wednesday nights, they gave him the Saturday night show. That exactly. becomes a success. So everything's supposed to be split. They send Jungle Boy to work on Saturday, and he wants to do some stupid angle with a car window. And he cusses out Tony Schiavone, a doctor, all the staff. And then finally they come to Punk and say, hey, can you come talk some sense into him? Punk says he talks some sense into him, talks him down from it. Hey, if you break this window, it's a rent a car, fucks it up for the rest of us. So then they go to the show. And on this show, this is Jungle in Wembley. Boy, now, fast forward, they're in they're yes. in the UK shot, like their biggest show of all time. 
still having issues. Punk doesn't get picked up at the airport, has to take the train. Um, <clears throat> just still petty shit going on. Young Bucks saying shit on TV and claiming tee hee hee. It's all fun. Um, Jack Perry breaks a car windshield at Wembley. And after the, the match, this happens in Gorilla. Tony's sitting, I guess, to the right behind the monitor. Well, he says something when he breaks the glass. Oh, yeah, camp. he said real grass, cr uh, real glass, cry me a real river. glass, cry me a river with his northern Cali, young bucks, Brian Alvarez, Ca uh, Southern California. Action. <laughs> cry, so me a river. This, so, cry me a river, dude. Owner shrinking go, voice. All these people go, have owner shrinking they, voices. Yeah, no shit. Uh, how does anyone get wet listening to that shit? I don't, yeah, really? I don't know. Fucking anyway. So they go backstage after the match, right before Punk's title defense with Joe. And this happens. Punk confronts him. He kind of gets into Punk's, you know, you know, direct area. They say he chest bumped him. I just saw him kind of get in his face. Yeah. Jungle Boy kind of takes a step back and plays with his hair. Punk, that's when the fight happens. Punk shoves him, chokes him out, stuff like right. that. Right. And so, during this, this again, that. this is all according to Punk shot. During this, Punk goes over to him and goes, what's your fucking problem? Whatever. And they start arguing. He goes, why are you doing this indie shit? Blah, blah, blah. And then uh, he says something to him like, I'm going to fuck you up or something like that. And then Jungle Boy said, do something about it. And then you see Punk. Lunge at him. Joe comes over, breaks it up. People in the back are like, oh, oh, well, um, and then, you know, <sighs> Punk storms off, you know, because he's got a match with Samoa Joe, which was probably maybe one of the best matches of the night, by the way, low key. And then he subsequently, Brian Danielson and a bunch of people watch it. They had to pretend that they have an NDA and they fire Punk because Tony Khan feared for his life. Now, everybody's seen the video now, Sha. Now, did yeah. you see anything in that video where you think someone should fear for their life or their <laughs> wife or even spilling a drink? No, not at all. But I have a question for you guys. And this kind of shows how inexperienced the company as a whole is. Hmm. Why would they go to CM Punk to try to school this guy if they know Punk is notorious for being a hothead? Like what, what made well, them Well, because think at that, that time, I think I can explain that because at that time, Punk was hot shit. He was the number one guy in the company. And yeah, but it doesn't just, matter fact, though. His, that doesn't change his personality. He's hot shit. I mean, everybody. I guarantee like, you, if they went to Daniel Bryan or Brian, whatever the fuck he's called now, like that probably would have been a better option. Right you know, if they wanted somebody that's an OG in the game to kind of school this young kid, CM Punk would have been my last option. Because you know how well, Punk feels about people in this scenario. Yeah, but, but prior to that, I don't know if be sure if you remember this, Dan Housen, all these other people were talking about how great Punk is. Punk wore Dan Housen's boots, and Punk, this is a very different CM Punk. He's a he's friends with everybody in the back. You don't remember that B show? They were all lining up to go oh, 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 to Punk before yeah. this happened. In fact, Dan Housen, after this uh, video aired last night, which I thought was kind of risky, posted some kind of funny meme in response to it. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw that. I mean, Punk definitely has his people, and they set him yeah. up in his in his own little camp on Saturdays. And that show FDR. was far and away better than Wednesday night. It was when it started. Shot it was a great show. I mean, it was very good. It was, yeah. I liked it. It was slowly becoming my favorite wrestling show. By the way, that, that Dan Housen dude, I actually saw him for the first time at spring break during mania week. That, yeah. that guy sucks, dude. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck people are seeing. That guy sucks. He's a, he's like a quasi hardcore guy too. He's a little bit of a, I don't give a shit. That guy, guy sucks, dude. That yeah, guy's I, terrible. I mean, he's not like, he's not anybody that I like the gimmick. Cause I, I think it was a good, I, it was an interesting idea. But you know that dude's. What I mean, is the dude, gimmick? He just like pours teeth into people's mouth. I thought it was like Sven Gulli, like you know, like chiller theater type thing. Like I don't know, but he's a yeah, That's what I was work. saying. Yeah, Sven they should have given reminded me of. They should have given him a, like a group to kind of manage, almost like Bray Wyatt, and just do fake. Well, he like, was cutaways. hurt too. This is what I'm saying. A lot yeah. of these guys like FTR, they all were like they love punk. There's punk guys, like blah blah blah. A lot of the young, some of the younger guys, you know, were all. And then as soon as like he wasn't there, it was like he was terrible. So um, this bombed this people that normally support the company were very visceral in their response that this was a terrible idea. It only drew a total 819,000. Um, and then it subsequently like went, I think the numbers for the close for the main event, like it just kept going. Like this is how it starts. They get the strong lead in from fucking, uh, I was going to say third rock from the sun because I'm 100 years old. Big strong Bang lead in from Big Bang Theory. Right, because a million people watch that in reruns plus easily, and then they go and then they peter out. But the thing I wanted to get your guys' opinion of, and then we have a bunch of movie stuff, is what happens now. Now that we have seen the the usual suspects, the fightful people, the Alvarez's, the Meltzers, 
like just take a load right to the face because they refused. Like Meltzer and Alvarez are now backpedaling about it, but they also gave conflicting information saying that the Bucks didn't want to do it. But then Sean Ross Sapp said, but they did want to do it. And it's just like, you don't know who to believe anymore because none of these people have a track record of any kind of honesty when it comes to AEW. Um, and, you know, sitting back being somebody who took a lot of shit from these people and the people who follow these people for like five fucking years straight, you know, if not more, you know, it's a bit of schadenfreude for me, you know, because I'm like, yeah, we fucking told you, you know what I mean? Like we said this on Wrestling Soup when no one else said it, we paid a very heavy price for it at the time. I want to know what happens now. In your opinion, what happens now? Because it failed. People are upset about it. The people defending it will, will defend them if they were found with a gas can and a building burning. And it's like, well, they didn't, we didn't start the fire. We didn't know that. So now that's it. It's, it's now definitely left to the cult members. Shot, what happens now, in your opinion? Does AEW rebound from this? Does it even affect them? Or do they just keep plugging along like they were, you know, while WWE is making record profits and getting billions of dollars uh, as a corporation? Well, I think everyone involved looks bad um including cm punk because i mean i don't know i don't know how you guys feel like punk was kind of at fault like the guy didn't touch him he's the one well, that, you don't know that, what he said to him i mean we all know it doesn't matter though if you're every a, fight every fight starts with somebody getting provoked by words right at but at the end of the day if you're a if you've been in the business for 25 years you should know better yeah. right before the main event and wembley like come on man you can yeah, but his ego his boy. ego is massive his ego that's what i mean though if you can't control your ego after 25 years of experience in this business it doesn't say good things about you at the right. same time, them releasing this fucking tape is a horrible look for them because it seems so petty. Like, it's just like, dude, it's petty. you guys waited till, till after WrestleMania till they had their moment just to try to, like, babyface yourself and it backfired. Now you're a fucking meme on the Internet. It's a bad it's a bad look for everyone, you know, and the young bucks like, dude, those guys. Oh, man, I, I just said <laughs> Danhausen sucks. That Those guys are fucking atrocious at everything. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like that gimmick was cool when like nobody knew them. And on I the was indies, yeah, on the indies when it was yeah, a when small they, they were killing show. PWG and, and Ring of Honor like back in it, but but it got old. It's stale. If they're still doing the same shtick as fucking fifteen years ago, like yeah. come on, man. You know, Sha, have you ever worked with them? No, I almost did. I did a uh, they did a shoot interview and I did the cover for it and they shut it down. So <laughs> really, okay. yeah, they shut it down. Yeah, yeah. they didn't like yeah. it. Okay. But so that, that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, honestly. <laughs> what, what happens now? No impact on AEW? Everything stays static? Do you think their numbers drop? Do you think they, they, they make another video trying to overlook, trying to make up for the previous video? Yeah, I think their best bet is just no sell this and, and keep it moving, man. Let the right. CM Punk thing go, dude. It's old. He's already signed with another company, the other company. I watched WrestleMania. I haven't watched WrestleMania in three years. I I've thoroughly enjoyed both nights for the yeah. most part you know yeah, like you I, actually, I was surprised i was surprised you told me that they're saying fuck left and right now like i was like Yo, what the, what am i watching like what, what happened here you know um <laughs> they so, waited you know, for man. you to come back Sha. that's what it was dude honestly like they kind of sold me on it if it was on netflix right now i'd probably start watching raw i just well, don't it have will cable, be. So well, I can't it will it. be next year so yeah i mean next year i might i might tune back in but i'm gonna you know i know we're talking about punk but just just real quick i'm gonna credit 90 percent of that to the rock Cause like, oh, of course, yeah, dude, that guy is meant to be a wrestler. Please stop acting. That's not made for you. Like wrestling is where the fuck you need to be at. You know what I mean? He's got like, eight movies guy. coming out in the next three years. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, he literally, she, he literally left to start the Mark Kerr movie, and then he's got to do the live action Moana movie. And he's and cool. Roman Reigns stepped it up, dude. Like I I haven't seen Roman wrestle in the whole time he's been champion, and I I was like, yo, this guy is a heel, is fucking money. Like this is exactly what he needs to what be. What did you think of Cody? I, I I'm not a Cody fan, dude. He's too like vanilla for me. Like he's he's he reminds me of a better version of John Cena, you know, like this like all American hero. So like a white John Cena comic book. Yeah, it's just <laughs> he's white kinda, Cena. Cody yeah. is white. What do you Cena? mean, John? He don't have that voice. Yeah, he's white um, Cena. I mean, he's talented. I'll give. I'll, I can't discredit the guy, man. I mean, the guy oh, yeah, was hard, yeah, doing hard nothing to say bad about any of these guys because dude, us, look. You like even me. I'm not a big Cody guy. I'm not a big Roma guy. But to sit here and say anything bad after this weekend seems very, I don't know. Seems a little silly. You know but what I mean? Like, yeah. Like I, I can't say I'm a fan, but I can't discredit the guy for bringing himself to this stage. Like he did that on his own. You know. I remember when they let go. When they let go of Cody, dude, he was doing PWG matches. 
You know, like yeah, he's he's he did everything. Things. He did the gambit. That's like yeah, how he became. He put in the work. Jackson. He knew, like, yo, I gotta get myself over. Similar to what uh Matt Cardona is doing right now. You know what I mean? Like Zach exactly. Ryder was yeah. dog shit. This guy is huge on the indies now. You know what I mean? Soon yeah. enough, I'm telling you, he's gonna blow up, and WWE's gonna get him back, and he's gonna be. Well, a yeah, that's, star. I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if he's there before the end of the year. I, I have so. never worked with Cody. No, yeah, people. I, I, I worked at, Cody. I worked at Starcast and did their whole pamphlet, so I did some art. In reference to him, but I mean, not directly working with Cody, but I, I yeah, work with yeah. Conrad during the whole. Um, oh yeah, I remember that thing. B Show Brian, what happens now? Um, it's hard to tell because, as, as Punk said during that interview, as long as Tony wants to bankroll this thing, and as long as TNT or TBS is willing to play ball, I don't know if anything's ever really going to happen. However, I am seeing a big sea change with people online lately, um, saying that this could be it, that they're finally done. It's too childish. It's a bunch of kids. I mean, honestly, that's why I posted that clip of fucking heavyweights last night, because that's what it is. It's like a giant summer camp with a bunch of kids that's that get to do whatever store. they want to do. Uh, it, it's Larry David's spite store. I, I, it's not a company. It's not run like CM Punk said it, guys. I don't know if you saw a shot too, but CM Punk said, this is we're not in the same business. I'm in the business to sell tickets, make money, get people to show up, buy merchandise. They're not in that business. Like I'm in that business. I'm in the wrestling business. They're not in that business. B show. Do you think next week, huge dip in ratings? I don't know if there's going to be a huge dip, but I think if, if there's any, if this is their finger poke of uh, doom, doom moment, I wouldn't be surprised think. at all. Okay. Um, I think it exposes them. I think it exposes everything that you guys on soup were saying for years. And a lot of people yeah, that were sucking the Kool-Aid down. were saying yeah. online that were yeah. fucking like, that's, one of the reasons I stopped watching wrestling for a while and, and I don't really interact as much as I used to on social media is because you post anything if it's negative about AEW and yeah. you have a bunch of spurgy dudes coming at you like oh, yeah. who don't understand contextual language, they don't understand sarcasm. anything. Sarcasm. Don't understand it's sarcasm. Nothing. Like yeah. you'll post a joke. It's like, oh, Jungle Boy's hair is very luxurious. Well, that's because he uses Pert Plus for men. It's like... It's a fucking joke, dude. Like yeah. they don't. Get oh yeah, it. yeah. People respond and, and, to jokes. Yeah, and everything is super serious. It's like dealing with Sheldon from Big Bang Theory all the time. Which yeah, is ironic. very Asperger. Yeah, it's very yeah. true. And it's just that's kind of why I got away with it from it because it wasn't fun. And then on top of that, the people that were covering covering it that I would listen to, like I'd listen to JD and Doses. I would listen to Solomon Monster. I'm sure those are both great guys. But the way they were tongue punching that company for months, and they were. And look, I'm for you know I know them personally. I yeah, they were, and they're not and, anymore. And the and all the other people that Not started anymore. podcasts, yeah, or yeah. migrated away from and, th and thank God JD grew a set. I mean, I saw him what two years ago that he got fucking pounced on for saying Jar Jade Cargill wasn't ready. She still doesn't look like she's ready. Yeah, and ironically, yeah. His response to her saying that he's sitting in his basement was to film him doing 135 squats, saying she's such a fucking motivation well, for him. But but here's the funny like, thing about JD. JD had more people in his chat about AEW than they had in the arena. By by. He had six thousand people in a chat, and they had thirty two hundred people in the arena. So and you good for him, man. You know, you know I'm not so, gonna, I'm not gonna knock the hustle. The dude kind of hard has... to kind of hard to argue with that. Listen, I just yeah. want to say this because I really want to get to these movie things. But um, my the, the the best thing about any of this for me is watching the people who have not objectively covered this company get their ass handed to them by people online. I've been waiting for this for a long time. And I hope it affects their bottom line. A lot of these people need to go back to get jobs because unless they either go work for AEW, stop pretending that you're a journalist, stop pretending that you didn't start watching wrestling in 2018, you know, like stop, just stop because I started watching in like 82. Like, I'm sorry that I have only devoted an hour of this a week uh, to my life, but uh, to talk about, but I think a lot of these people and for people to take their money put it away from those people and, and, and put it away from any of the people that have not objectively covered this company for access journalism, because it's been going on too long. It's been going on forever. And a lot of people paid prices for this. So, you know, please keep that in mind as these numbers dwindle and people now start going, wow, the show really is terrible. Wow. These really are bad people. Wow. These fake journalists and, you know, are really just mentally ill people with no social skills that devoted all of their time and identity to a wrestling company so that they could get pictures at the party like this. And, and, and that's their life. That was never my life. That was never going to be my life. Good for you. If, that, if you're the top guy in fake wrestling news, 
you're the skinniest kid at fat camp. I never, this was not an aspiration I have ever had in my life. Zero. This is stuff I've done recreationally for fun with people I like out of, out of a fucking, out of a, the success of my older brother, period. That's it. That's all it is. I like talking with people about it. I'll continue to talk with people about it. But you need to start calling these people the usual suspects on the carpet. Pull your money away from them and stop talking about them because this is what makes their peepees hard. And that's the only way to fucking impact these people. And that's it. That's all I wanted to say. But uh, we have three huge fucking movies to talk about, all which debuted red hot fucking trailers this week. Uh, and the one we're going right to, I think, is for, I, not to speak for the, the guys, is the uh, Ty West conclusion to his incredible trilogy, which is just maybe one of the most anticipated movies of the year on this show. I am talking about the sequel to X, the uh, third installment uh, to Pearl. We're talking about Maxine uh, and the A24 uh, summer movie. That's uh, The trailer was finally released. Uh, so we're going to talk about it and stop it and start it as we do because, uh, you know, we don't want to get copyright strikes. So we're going to play the Maxine trailer for you right now. So, Maxine, your agent tells us you're quite a popular name in adult film and entertainment. Is that correct? I'm curious. Did you always want to be in that line of work? I always God wanted damn. to be famous. <laughs> Is she your new favorite, John? The sides we She's gave you, just go ahead, all right? I know the lines. Be a fucking goth. Yes, yeah, same. To the camera this and girl. Threw her if I ever get married, I'd cheat on him in a second with her. Let's not forget <laughs> that Mia Goth is deeply and profoundly and has uh, children with Shia LaBeouf and stood by him through all of his craziness, arrests, uh, ac accusals of, of sexual misconduct, wow. and she was a down girl. Did not leave her man, and he credits her for saving his fucking life. Can you believe that, John? She's a little crazy, though. That stuff probably turned her on, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. She I seems like the type that would that would get wet from toxicity. She is. Like. She, this girl has sex appeal, be show to fill the Grand Canyon. Yeah. She's I was going to say, Shot, I don't think you're dissuading, John. I think you're only making the desire stronger. <laughs> I mean, look, guy, she had, I mean, I know this is a porn star character, but she has like, she has like complete sex appeal. Like she's not the prettiest. She's not the most stunning beauty. She's not the Barbie girl. Like, you know what I mean? But she just has this, you know what I'm saying? Be show. She just has this like almost sexual fucking energy. It's so just you just know she's a freak. Her, you yeah. just know it. You know, you can just yeah. look at her and just know in real life this girl's let's a freak. See, let's see her do some freaky shit. Yeah. I'd feel terrible if she's like the sweetest, most innocent I know, person. right? She's like, yeah. out Christian. This is all an act. the lens directly. So this is based in the 80s. 1985 L.A. Name five celebrities who got their start in Corey. We didn't know about Amelia Curtis, John Travolta, Demi Moore, Brooke Shields, and... Maxine fucking Minx. And they've brought in the Night Stalker guy. The Night Stalker. Night Stalker. The Night Stalker in Los Angeles. One of the most prolific serial killers. Brutal serial killer of all time. Posted every bad girl in Hollywood. Maxine. I'm the private detective. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> I love this this I 80s music too. Very Laura Branigan's song. Look at Kevin Bacon, Fast. guys. Ain't finished with you. It's Look at this shit. Homage to the, to the Bates Motel. Tragically, another victim. Ah, of that's my boy stuff. right now. I love that guy. I knew three people who were murdered in three days. I'll be kind of violent, my man. What are you hiding, Maxine? Just a part of it. I mean, so, shock, Kevin Bacon. This is huge for, for Ty West. Yeah, I, I like them, including um, like the Bates Motel and the Night Stalker. Like, it's it's cool that they took, you know, these. I just, real I wish they would have. Yeah, like real yeah. life stuff Hollywood. from the 80s. I like that a yeah. lot about 1985, it. 1985. That was a big, I was in uh, eighth grade, guys. I was 13, by, 12, 13 years old. Wow. By the way, every movie in this trilogy feels very different, which is pretty hard to do. You know, like, they're genre Pearl, pictures. I mean, they're all genre pictures. Pearl was completely different than X. X was like a grindhouse movie. Pearl was like oh, an yeah. RT. This is more oh, yeah. of like a, not like a giallo, but like a slasher film looks, from the 80s. Like it's, 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 it's not a, it doesn't look like a horror movie, B show. This is what Mike from Necromaniacs and I were talking about. This feels like a thriller. Yeah, I can, I can dig that. I can also see some of the giallo aspect of it too, except oh, sure. like, you know, who Color the killer schemes. is, you think. 
the color. Scheme. And that's the one thing I was going to say, Chad, too, is <clears throat> when we talk about movies and, and uh, serialization and, and sequels and stuff like that, a lot of times the characters and premises run thin. This was very smart to do three very different movies with very different feels, very different styles. And same only really pretty much. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, and actually, same, in the first movie, awesome. she played someone completely different who. That's right. You know what I mean? So it overlaps, but it's not like, hey, it's the same premise, the same exact thing. It's three completely different you know, types of movie going on. Now, did either one of you guys know that she, that this was that she became a horror actress from porn to horror? Because it seems like that's part of the film. The film. Did you know that? I didn't know that at all. No, I've actually never seen the trailer. I was saving it for the show. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, let's get let's get to it. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. confidentiality. What'd you do? Is that Gina Carlo Esposito? No, it looks like it. What was going on in your life that's interfering with this picture? Squash it. I intend to. Nice. Maxine. 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 Lily Collins. Yeah, Carlos it was Cito, Gina Carlos. Was Cito, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> this is fucking shot. Like, is that is that the movie you're looking forward to? Probably the most, maybe the most this year. Yeah, I mean, going into it right off the bat, without even seeing the trailer, I could have told you that. Um, I'm a big fan of Ty West and obviously A24, and and even a bigger fan of her because I mean, dude, she's just. She's the type of girl that would, you know, would go to the bar with you and you take a shot of tequila and she asks you to like spit it in her mouth. Like she's that type of girl. Yeah, 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 she's, you know she's, I mean? she's, she's just absurd. Yeah. B show, does this fulfill you? I mean, you're such a fan. You were a fan of X. You were a super fan of Pearl. Uh, and of course, we we all like think Ty West here is just an understated kind of great fucking director. I yeah. mean, is this, is this what you wanted? Yeah, I was hopeful. I was hopeful but uh guarded about the 80s thing because as we've seen from ahs 84 a lot of times they just slap neon on shit and corny outfits yeah, sometimes some of their shit's pretty good there in a, uh, american horror story yeah, yeah but in this case i feel like they nailed it because not only do you see the neon and it, it looks like the 80s but also it's got that grungy filmy kind of yeah the film quality i was going to ask you guys about that the cinematography for this it looks like it's shot directly to old school like like film you know yes not the video. yeah no, it looks good, and I was I, honestly, I'm I'm waiting to see where the uh, Night Stalker thing goes because at first I wasn't too sold on it, but honestly, from what it looks like and from Ty West, I'm gonna just kind of give him a pass on this one and go with oh, it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I'm super excited. We're very big fans of Ty West here. We're big fans of Mia Goth. We're big fans of this trilogy, and this does not disappoint. The fact that Ty West can go from making a small, you know, I think we said uh, what was it like three or four million? I think was X. Pearl was made two weeks on a million bucks. You know, and now he's got a movie, guys, with like, you know, Kevin Bacon, Giancarlo Esposito, Bobby Carnaval, Halsey. Uh, you know, it's, it looks like it's getting a big push. It's got that Vice City soundtrack that somebody, uh, I think Cleric or somebody mentioned. Uh, one of these songs is from Vice City. And yeah. I bet you this soundtrack's going to be a banger. I, I'll tell you that. I'm excited about the soundtrack, too. I can't wait till they release it on, a, you know, on vinyl or whatever, but it's probably going to be like yeah. $50 or $60. Something oh, like yeah. Shot. Really. How much do you think this? Yeah. Do you imagine this gatefold 80s vinyl fucking is going to be? Yeah, I mean, A24 puts out their own vinyls. Um, they're typically like around 50 bucks. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. 50 bucks. So, which honestly that... is fair. I mean, that's, that's the, <laughs> I think that's fine. I think that's normal fine. vinyl. I mean, Going wax, through. wax work, you know, they charge about the same. So, not to be outdone, a uh, couple days later, uh, finally, the legit trailer for Todd Phillips' sequel to the Joker film starring Lady Gaga, as Michael <laughs> Scott, I think, would say. Um, uh, I thought this looked fucking incredible. If you hadn't seen it yet, we're going to show it now. These are not very long trailers, but uh, this is going to be an enormous film, obviously coming off of an Academy Award for Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Lady Gaga has been nominated for so many awards for her music and her songs, and she's done a lot of great work in, in, in film, actually. Um, I'm not a huge fan of her music, but I like her quite a bit as a person. And she's got a fucking, she's got a phenomenal presence. Uh, Todd Phillips, you know, uh, looks like uh, he's delivering here. So it, we're going to check it out now. The Joker of Fola, Adu, what is this? How do you pronounce this B show? Isn't it Fale Adu? Fale Adu. Fale Adu. Fale Adu. 
Shot right off the bat. I'm like, holy shit. Man, it, through the it, bars. It, joke for us today. It looks like they sent him to Kensington for a couple months. He's skinny as fuck. <laughs> He's so method, though, guys. Look at him. He's so method, dude. Like, he is just... The we use that music right to make us whole. It looks like he's on meth. To balance... Yeah. He's a, he looks like the first movie show. I love... Look at, the, look at that. That's gorgeous. Wow. That's nobody. fucking... Look at that. That's fucking gorgeous, man. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. Good Jesus. place to pause it. Right off the bat, shot cinematography. Yeah, that's a ten out of ten, dude. Everything is a painting. <laughs> this is just Come my on. dick too far over here. Jesus, that's great. B show. Yeah. I mean, you notice these shots like are just on a level of like high art. Like right off the that's bat. one thing i really liked about a lot of movies that come out from guys like this lately is you watch a trailer and it's not so much. Like we've seen so many trailers where it's like, oh, this is what happens in the movie, and then this happens, and this yeah, they happens. give you the whole movie, and then they, yeah, that's it. Yeah. This is just like it's almost like a series of I mean they're moving but still images that look like fucking paintings and works of art. It's just fantastic. I think it looks grimy. Do you guys think it looks a little grimy? Like dirty. Like like yes. I don't like like it looks like a like like we were just in a dirty asylum. It's raining, it's dark. Nobody looks good. You know what I mean, Shot? It just looks very grimy to me. Yeah, I mean the first one was kind of like that too, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. All right, well here we go. Now we're going to get Oh okay. shit! It's just one after another. I like movies like this where everybody looks like they might have like an STD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where everybody, you know. Dude, look at that! Look at this! Shit. Fucking crazy! Wow. Like a nightmare. Like Joaquin Jeez. got syphilis on purpose just to the yeah, It's cinematography. Holy Beat shit! Burt Bacharach in a Joker movie? Oh my god! Look at this shot! Look at shot! Look at that! Wow. Jesus. Tom Jones. Oh, that's Tom Jones. Yeah, that's dope. Look at these. What's changed, Arthur? I'll tell you what's changed. We're not alone anymore. That's what we should be talking about. Oh my god. This is great. Watch the shot. I want to see the real you. Dude, look at this. Oh, oh fuck yeah, dude. Oh my, oh, god. My god. oh my god. Oh my god. I'm about to come. <laughs> Holy shit. I know. I'm like, even, I mean, oh, honestly, there's just no way this is bad. I'm sorry. I just, I'm like, blown away and i i just shop what are you I... dude my balls just dropped again in my fucking 30 right there's no <laughs> way going through bad. puberty again yeah i just oh, oh my god man and for people that were saying this is like a musical and it's going to be bad like boy you better shut the fuck up because this this Look looks, at it. This Look looks at amazing it. yeah I, I have to say i i didn't know what i was going to see and uh b show i'm I just feel like this looks like the first movie on steroids. Dude, it looks like a high class whore where it's stylish, dressed nice, looks great, hair's in place, but you know it's dirty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, like Sha said, it looks like everybody's got some kind of disease. Like, yeah. you know, like, yeah. Like everybody's but, got yeah, I mean, but shot cinematography. Get yeah. the fuck out of here with this. I mean, this is like this is like high art, man. Yeah, I mean, the, the cinematography is out of this world, dude. Like, I mean, just that last shot. I mean, who thinks of that? That's fucking, oh, my God. I, I Now, if I'm not mistaken, didn't the woman who did the cinematography win an Academy Award as well, B-Show? I feel like she did. It was a, a woman who won, I think, cinematography for this movie, along uh, with Joaquin Phoenix. You may be right. I'd have to verify that. I I'm, I'm, I, I, it seems like so long ago. I mean, shot. any chance you th you're not going to see this in a big screen? <laughs> I'm going to try my hardest, man. You know, I haven't seen a, a movie in the theater for uh, shit, man, months now. That's a great scene, too. I love that with the Arkham B show. That's such a that's such a big dick fucking move right there with the Arkham in the background. 
you know what, guys? I don't know. Would you agree with me or not? I'm getting Bo's afraid vibes from this. Okay. Very fair there. Just very like, because like there was one scene where it looked like he was running from himself. It was very reminiscent of the first movie when he got hit by the car. Um, this on top of the hotel Arkham when Arkham is an asylum. Like, I just, yeah, maybe. especially with him being an unreliable narrator last time, like, it Which almost looks this, like he's clearly an unreliable narrator here, Bisha. Yeah, it almost looks like a like he's it, crazy. I'm not saying it is, but it could all be in his head, and it's this grand vision, delusion. Of That's grandeur. true too, shot. Like maybe none of this is actually really taking place. Yeah, I think somebody in the chat room actually mentioned that. Um, Did they? Know. Yeah, Joe Punches. Yeah, Punches said that. Okay, shout I, out to I him. Yeah. Well, listen, if that's the case, I mean, none of this has been leaked. Nobody knows anything about this other than what we've seen. Uh, I'm excited. B show. Definitely getting your ass to a theater for this. Absolutely, man. This looks amazing. And then if, if with it all juxtaposed to Tom Jones singing Burt Bacharach. Yeah, Burt Bacharach, yeah. Now. Yeah, and that's oh why, you know, God. so there is, I just want to bring this up in case because we don't know what we're getting. It's not coming out till October. Um, Todd Phillips has said this is not a musical. He said music is a component of this. It's a component of the story, but it is not a musical. Now, there are people that are concerned that they are saying that because they feel that that would poison the well. But a Todd Phillips shot doesn't seem like that kind of a dude. Like, I don't know. He just, you know what I mean? Like, if he says it's not a musical, it's not a musical. And that doesn't seem like it's a musical. I mean. Yeah. It is know. an R-rated film, by the way, for people in the chat. It is R-rated. Oh, sure. yeah. yeah. I mean, just look at I'm this, excited. dude. It looks, oh, my God. I mean, Bo is afraid. But you don't get Bo is afraid vibes? B-Show, I think, nailed it with this. It's, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like I love this grimy, whatever, the, whatever they're putting in front of this shot, the the, the can to make it look dirty. Like, look at even these like 70s looking 80s old school New York police cars, guys. Police cars haven't looked like this in New York in like 30 years, 25 years. And it's all, you know, shot in like Brooklyn and like Queens and the Bronx. Uh, I'm excited. I, I don't know what we're going to get. I'm excited. I like both of them quite a bit. I like Todd Phillips and previously joaquin phoenix this might have been one of the greatest performances of the 21st century i mean it's just easily it just is but not to be outdone now i am going to have to run with this movie a little bit because many people have seen the original speak no evil it's like a foreign film it is a very good movie maybe one of the better horror films in the last five years i don't want to give away the plot because that's a, a, a it's a it's a quintessential part of the story, not knowing where this is going. But this was a foreign film that was incredibly jarring and disturbing. Can you pull up B show just a foreign for the original Speak No Evil? I just want to know who, like, what I'm trying to remember if it was like Danish or Swiss or, but if you have not you know seen the year? Uh, Speak No Evil to Shudder, just put Speak No Evil Shudder because that was on Shudder for it was a Shudder exclusive, I think, for a while. It's about four or five years ago. My brother Mike told me, I think we had saw it like late in the year, the year it came out, and said, This is one of the best horror films of the year. And then I watched it, and the ending made me want to like take a shower till I passed out. Like, I the ending was just so agonizing to fuck. Is it watch. 2013? Is it that far ago? That I don't far think back? So. No, uh, we talked about it on the show. We did, but I'm the one... only one who's seen it. There's one that says 20, 2022. 2022. Yeah. yeah that's that's it. So they remade an American version of this. Unfortunately, Blumhouse is involved in some capacity. But um, can you pull that up, Bisho? I just want to see what country it was based because they speak several languages in it, including English. I was making sure I wasn't spoiling anything if pictures came Yeah, up. no. No, I mean, it's too um, involved plot. Yeah, language Danish, Danish and Dutch, and it's distributed by Nordisk Film. Okay. So I would yeah, imagine it, it's yeah. Danish. Yeah. Now, both of you guys have heard of this movie. It is a fuck. It is like on a list of fucked up movies. This is in the top five. That's all I can say. It was so popular that they immediately rushed an American version um, with big name actors and actresses. Can we pull up the 2024 version? Because the director, my brother Mike, put me on blast, uh, is a great director. A director who's done some good shit. Um, so we should have some full faith and credit in this director, B-Show. James Watkins? James Watkins. What has James Watkins done? He has done Eden Lake, banger. The Woman in Black, good movie. Uh, he also did, uh, I think, the sequel to The Descent, which is not as good as The Descent. The Sun's great. You guys have never seen Eden Lake? No. Shot, you no, never but seen I'm, Eden Lake? No, but I'm familiar with it, though. I've never seen it. The, end, the last shot of that movie is on a whole other level. So this director's got chops. Um, they remade an American version of it. Um, it looks shot for shot. 
for people that have seen it, we're going to play the trailer for it right now. And uh, it's called Speak No Evil, and it comes out in theaters uh, this summer. This is my husband, Ben. Patrick Feld. This is my wife, Kira. This is Agnes. And um, has some trouble communicating. You can be a bit insecure. Nice Vespa. Yeah, isn't she? You should try. Can we? I won't call the fun police if you don't. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you have two couples, I think in this case they're in Italy, that meet, that have small children, and they become friends. They hang out. It looks like that kind of a movie, right? Doctor, listen, you have to Yeah, I think it said Tuscany. Yeah, just, Tuscany, yeah. It looks like a nice little rom-com type of thing yeah, to start yeah, so out. Let, let, let this roll here for a little bit. Look at this backdrop. Gorgeous. It's like Infinity Pool. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. So they invite the couple they meet to go visit them where they live in their country. Remind you, I'm a vegetarian. And this is where it goes off the wild. The wild. You. That is so... I'm... This is literally a shot for shot scene. Who is it? I know that actor. You'll know, yeah. I can never remember his name. He's Scottish. He's he was in um he was in the M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. Split? Okay, yeah. yeah. So now they went to visit this family and they're acting very weird. So you'll see some stuff. Here. Got a little volume here, B. Get less than murder. That's almost all the way up. <laughs> so the wife suspects there's some weird behavior. Something's not right with him. He has a condition it makes it hard for him to communicate. Sometimes it's okay to think things, but you can't actually say them. Oh, no. Thank God there's a doctor in the house. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> what? This is all shot for but shot. Didn't you say crazy. you were a doctor? Did I? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Look at their faces. Of course I'm a bloody doctor. Now, mind you, they met these people in Tuscany. They went to another country to go stay with them. The dance that you've been working on. Oh, this is another shot for shot. Same song, too. But... Where did you come from? Where did you go? And what is wrong with you? Just Can we pause it for a second? Yeah, pause it. One, two. Not to not to make it about race, but I feel like this is something that would only happen to white people. Where you just I was like, just gonna say that, dude. God damn. I, we're on I the can't same page. imagine. I can't imagine. Uh, for all you know, that's a part crazy. of the story. I can't imagine no honkies. Two random strangers no are just like being like, yeah, let me go to a different country with these random strangers I just met. Like, what? White people do shit like that. That's what I'm white saying. People. This is not, no other culture would white be people. Like that. They could have just called it white people shit. That's really what they could have yeah. called it. Now, now, again, they're in a foreign country. They went to visit these people. They just traveled like they thought they were normal. And now everything is breaking down while they're there. <sighs> Two, three, four. This is the one. So that's their son that doesn't speak. Oh, what is wrong with you? I want to pack up the car. I want to leave right now. Also, does he have no tongue? I'm just sad to see you go. You can then go out there and be completely normal. Okay. We've been pretending it's normal since we got here. Dad? Jesus. Fucking A, dude. Remember that time you guys came to stay? <laughs> Is that McAvoy? Out, to leave us yeah. Saying, Bye. This God. fucking movie gets so fucked up. Like I like this movie takes a turn, guys. And once it like until it gets to the turn, you're like, well, well, I don't really understand what's going on. And then when you understand what's going on and it takes that turn, it is such an unflinching, like the last like 20 minutes of this movie, you're like this, like, like, please make it stop. Just make it fucking stop. The ending is bleak. Sha, I know you've heard of the original because the original has been on a lot of people's like repertoire. But uh, this, I mean, it looks good. I mean, for this does not look like a Blumhouse movie. Is it a Blumhouse movie? It's an associate. They're in association. With, it's a oh. universal movie in association with oh. Blumhouse. It's not like a traditional Blumhouse movie. Yeah. Um, it looks intriguing. I mean, I, I don't know the original story, so I, you know, you know a little bit more about it. But just off the trailer, like I'm, I'm intrigued by it. It looks more like a thriller, though. I don't. Is it a horror movie? Is it? Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's so I like the last scene though with the tongue that like, that was that was dope. That's man. that's that's the least upsetting thing in the yeah. movie. Oh Jesus! If Christ. it is, it looks like it's shot. My brother Mike would talk about it. And it's like okay, it looks shot for shot. If it's shot for shot, there's not a lot of American movies that will do what you're gonna see in this movie. There's just not. There's just not B show. I'm telling you, it goes there. 
it goes exactly it goes it goes to the place that you think it's not going to go to because it's a movie yeah which is surprising from blumhouse which is maybe why they signed on as either distributor or a producer Distri- as opposed i think to the they main... uh yeah universal is the is the distributor so i think they're a co-producer yeah as opposed to it being a blumhouse film yeah uh, this may yeah. be a little bit racy for them which hey for them to grow some balls and do that after the past couple franchise bombs that have been very tame by comparison in some cases yeah I mean, and there's no way it's, seen it's pg there's shot this is an impossible pg-13 movie trust me there's no chance yeah um bisho can you just pull up the cast i want to know who the women are so the guy who plays the um a protagonist uh father he's from a uh, flea bag very very big show i like the show quite a bit um phoebe waller bridgers i think was her name he played a priest in there he's a good actor that guy's solid but the girl looks very familiar the blonde wife i just who mackenzie is she? davis who is mackenzie davis that name she's sounds got... familiar oh she's from the blade did you guys see blade runner the remake the, the blade runner remake i didn't i heard it's it. really good though yeah it's good yeah she's she's uh she plays a prostitute in that she's really good she also played she ended up in the term the bad terminator she's a good actress but she's been in some weird movies uh have you seen oh, the turning i see that on there i feel like i might have it sounds familiar yeah she's she's been in a how bunch was, of shit. how was the martian was that any good i couldn't get through it i got very bored with it yeah i got very bored with it tully i've seen uh tully was okay she's She's, she's got a, I don't know, she's got a pretty face, you know? Meh. I don't know if she's American. She's Wait. got like an interesting, like an inter- she played Sarah Connor, I think, possibly, in one of the Terminators. She got cock diesel for that. Yeah, that's wow, look at that. Wow. She yeah. I don't think that's real. I don't that's think that's real. I think, no, I think that's AI. Like she, yeah, she looks, Actually, like she, belongs in like, she looks like she belongs in like a reboot of like Sex in the City or something. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe. that kind of face. Well, Sha doesn't like it because she's got a long neck. So that's, you know. Yeah. And she just yeah. looks very generic. I show who's the other, who's plays the wife? Because uh, I don't recognize. She's the only one I don't recognize. McAvoy, James McAvoy is obviously the star of the movie. Uh, there's not a lot of characters in this. There's very few people. You're seeing everybody in the film. Who is she? Aisling from, I can't even pronounce that. Aisling Franciosa. Franciosa. What is she from? She's oh, French. stop motion. Oh, she's the main girl from Stop Motion, which, by the way, everyone said was fantastic. And she's from The Fall. Okay, I know that team. Last she Voyage of the Deer. Oh, Nightingale. wow. Yeah, she's yeah. the girl from that. Holy shit. Don't forget and Nightingale. Shot, you've been telling me about Nightingale forever. She's the yeah, star of Nightingale. Banger, dude. I fucking love I that movie. See that. I need to watch that, dude. Yo, you would like that a lot, dude. You got to check I need that out. to see Nightingale. God yeah, damn hell it. Yeah. What was the premise of that without giving the form away? What was the premise of that film? Uh, it's basically a girl that gets like lost in the woods. She runs away and uh, she teams up with this um, like young slave and they try to fight off against Jesus. you know all the bigots out there. Yeah, she's got pretty brutal. Her. It's pretty fucking violent. It's not a horror movie, but it's it's violent. Yeah, I I heard it's pretty pretty good. got some pretty fucked up scenes in it if I remember correctly, like some brutal yeah. killing scenes. Right? It's on Hulu. Oh wow, fuck. Gots to be watching that. Bisha, what's your thoughts on this movie? <laughs> Looks pretty brutal. Not going to be sugarcoating that one. Um, if it goes where I think it's going to go, that's going to be... I mean, he cut the kid's tongue out with it. You know what I mean? How? It's got to go south from there. It's got to get worse. So, yeah. I'm intrigued, yeah. but it's one of those movies where it's like... It, I might need a chaser after it, you know, to, to cleanse my palate. That's yeah. kind of the vibe I'm getting from it. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, but when I tell you that's like on that's like on three, you know, on a scale of one to ten on fucked up things. You know, I, I I'll say this before we head over to Patreon because we have so many things we need to talk about Patreon. I really feel like the year on paper, movie wise, and this is just scratching the surface, could be a very big year. Um, we're getting let's not forget we have like Deadpool 3, it's going to be a fucking monster movie. It looks fucking fantastic as far as that goes. Currently, right now, we still have in theaters nice. Dune 2, which is, my at this point, the best movie I've seen all year. You also have a Ghostbusters movie, which I heard is not very good, but it's doing pretty well. You also have a King Kong movie, which I heard is not that great, but also is doing very well. Now we're going to have a Planet of the Apes movie. Let's not forget that we're going to have a lot more horror movies, including Smile 2, including Terrifier 3. I mean, B-Show, on paper... The year's looking pretty goddamn good, especially these three movies we just fucking talked about. It's pretty stacked, and I'm surprised that 
it really didn't get rolling until now. There's been only a handful of movies that have come out for 2024 that we've even had on our radar. And it seems yeah. like all these movies starting in the summertime and into the fall, it's really going to get, you know, pretty intense. So, yeah. Um, although I did, we did, I think we talked about it last week. That one, um, You'll Never Find Me was pretty good. That was on Shudder. Yes. You watched it. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk about the Omen and the Patreon shot. I mean, you got to think now. I mean, you were saying like, look, it's not looking like a great year. Last year wasn't that great year. This is looking way better than last year. Don't you think on paper at least? Yeah, I think last year, um, most of the good movies that came out weren't horror related. We had a lot of good like blockbuster type movies. Blockbusters. It was the know? year of the blockbuster. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had, you know, the Yorgos Lanthimos movie. We had fucking uh, Napoleon and... Um, Killers you know, of the Flower Moon. Scorsese. Yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon. We had uh, Oppenheimer. There was a lot yeah. of big you time. Know, small art house movies. movies like The Holdovers and, you know, you know uh, that movie... Um, that uh, the Korean based movie that I saw that I can't remember the name that I fucking loved. It was one of my favorite movies of the year. Past, Past lives. lives. Oh my God. It's fucking phenomenal. Bicho. It's fucking, it's, it's phenomenal. It's make, it maybe was, one of the best independent films I've ever seen. It was asteroid city last year. Yeah. yeah. Asteroid city was last year. It didn't do well, but I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed it for what it was. You know what I mean? I think horror kind of didn't knock people out, but the blockbuster shot were, I mean, they were great. I mean, like Oppenheimer and Killers of Black. I mean, it was just Barbie. It was just, you were just beaten to death with these movies from like the summer on. Yeah, I think this year um, we're getting a lot of different type of movies as far as the blockbusters. They're, they're more like the Ghostbuster, you know, like, I don't know. Franchise. Beetle, yeah, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. You know. We forgot about these. <laughs> those type of movies. We're not getting so many of those like, masterpieces like, you know, Killers. Of, like, we're not getting a Scorsese film or anything like that. So. No, um, we might yeah. get that Coppola movie, which we'll talk about if that get that Megalopolis movie, but apparently it's the most batshit fucking craziest thing ever shot. Um, but yeah, I definitely uh, I definitely think uh, the year is turning around, you know. But uh, guys, we have a shit ton of stuff we want to talk about in that Patreon. Um, obviously, uh, we would love for you to go to patreon.com backsplash spitball media. Sign up. You can get to be a part of the Q&A. You get access to... 1300 hours roughly of exclusive content it's only five dollars great bargain uh thank you to the new people for showing up thank you to the tons of people chilling in the chat tonight uh we really really appreciate it we hope you'll join us again next week uh because we'll probably have a ton of new and wonderful entertainment stories but we're in over to patreon but before we do that uh, we always like to talk about our friends and plug them, like Deathmatch Outlaws, like the Drew Yari Experience, like I said, Classics 86 on YouTube, the Down on the Thundercast, and of course, the Don Tony and Kevin Castle show. Uh, currently, right now, Necromaniacs is shooting an episode right now. Don't know when it'll come out, but you want to be checking them out for weekly horror rundowns of a movie every week. And of course, the Human Experience podcast. I'll be joining the boys over in the UK on Ringsiders Wrestling to talk a little bit about WrestleMania and some other stuff this weekend. Mojo and Dirk's most dastardly show, The Garden of Doom. And then we have the Old Guy Metalcast, our good friend Ronald Anderson and his clothing company, FunkBetty.com. You should be checking them out to get some lovely spring clothes. MJW Games, Cherry Jesus on YouTube and his band Kaiser. Of course, my dear friend Sam Hoyos, uh, his band Playing Dead and his podcast, The Red River Podcast. Bio Geeks, that's Fate 316. Of course, the Highmarks Podcast, the Midnight Mass Creature Cast, the Weekly Detour with Anthony Alston and Teddy. And of course, the Guns of Geeks Podcast. John, anything happening at the old Planet Mondo? Yeah, I'll be streaming on Sunday night. So, you know, go subscribe to Planet Mondo Sunday night. I'll be going over some movie stuff and I also want to follow up on the Diddy and also uh, J. Cole versus Kendrick Lamar. I want to Yes. Kinda, and if we that. if there was no wrestling story, we would have done a very deep dive on that. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz I'm very curious about that and uh, I don't think there's been a cool rapper since like 2000 that came out. Uh B Show, uh what's happening on the B Show Brian channel? trying to figure out what I want to do because I don't know if I have enough time to do long form stuff like I used to or the um, documentary type of shit that I used to or edited videos. It just takes way too long. So I think I'm going to stick to shorter content commentaries. Um, I've been doing some some TikTok stuff and uh, Chucky Lair and I went back and forth a little bit. He's awesome. Follow him too. Chuck oh, I've Lair. known him forever. Yeah, we've been friends. Yeah, forever. awesome. So yeah, just be sure Brian.com, like, subscribe. And when I put something up pretty soon, you'll see it. Uh, and you were also on Soup this past week doing the I WrestleMania was. Stuff. I did. Uh, I did a couple episodes of Soup. I did the uh, WrestleMania Night One recap, and then I also did the pre uh, the pre WrestleMania show. Uh, and uh, I'll be uh, joining a very. I'm gonna save it for next week, but uh, I committed to do a. Uh, uh, I'm doing Ringsiders, but I committed to do a very interesting new podcast that's getting a lot of attention. 
Uh, I don't want to talk about it yet because oh, get away. Oh, I think I know, but I'm not going to. I got a, yeah. There's a little. There's a. There's a, I'll be joining a puppet uh, in a couple of weeks for a podcast. That's all I'm going to say about that for right now. But uh, guys, you're going to want to join us over on Patreon. Uh, we love that you guys were chilling with us tonight. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you next week in the old Spiffle Media. Peace.